My name is Nora Salos, and I teach oil and acrylic painting here at Main Street Art and Glass. Um, tonight I'm going to do a demonstration of the alla prima method of painting. Alla prima is from the Italian word at first, and it means to basically do your painting all in one session using a wet and wet technique. Uh, before you start painting, there's a few supplies you need. You need an easel. And I'm using a really nice one that I purchased here at the store. It's adjustable, it's lightweight, it's very portable. You need a canvas, you need paint, and you need some brushes. Um, you also need a palette knife, which I have to go over here and get. <laughs> and a palette. I'm going to be using oil paints tonight, um, but you can use acrylic paints, and the only difference really is acrylic paints are water-based, oil paints are solvent-based, and you'll have to use solvents to clean up. So the first thing you do, um, well, first, first of all, I'm going to talk about my setup. Um, can you see the fruit? This is what I'm going to be painting tonight, and the reason I chose it is because it's something colorful, and it's a group of three. It's always good to have an odd number of subjects in your um, setup. It just looks better. I wouldn't have to be painting fruit. I could be painting anything, um, old toys, vases, flowers, you know, anything that's interesting to you will probably make a good painting. But I've been doing a lot of fruit lately. And if you could look over here at this painting. One of the cameras. <laughs> um, so I am I should be able to do this pretty fast because I've done like three fruit paintings in the last couple weeks. So to get started, we start with a neutral color, which is kind of an earth color. And what I'm going to do is position the objects on my canvas in, in an approximate you know, place of where they are, just to get an idea if it's a good composition. And nothing I do right here is set in stone. I can always just you know, wipe it off, move it, whatever, just, just to kind of get an idea. And you want to work with thin paint in the beginning. And it looks like I'm making my objects a little larger than they actually are, which is okay with fruit. The reason you start with a neutral color is it will blend in with the rest of the colors more easily. So I have a square canvas. It's 12 by 12. And if I look at what I'm painting, my subject is probably a seven inch plate. So I am probably painting them just a little bit larger than life. The other important thing you want to think about when you're painting is your light source. I have a light shining down on my fruit because that will create a little bit of drama and some shadows. So I guess it's okay. You don't want it directly in the center because that's boring. So I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do after I get a position, I'm gonna put in some shadows and I'm still using the same bas basic earth tone. And if your, if your plate's not, you know, or anything is not absolutely symmetrical, don't worry about it. You're just, in the beginning, you're just trying to get an idea if this is going to work or not. If it's going to... create a decent painting. Okay, so now I'm just kind of roughing in the values. What I have is a lime, a lemon, and an orange. And the lime is quite a bit darker than the other two fruits. So 
so I just want to see how that's going to look. Oops, and I just, I just hit the wrong color there, but that's okay. Just accidentally dipped it in the <coughs> cool color. Another thing you'll need is paper towels or a rag, something to clean your brush off with. I think the first thing I'm going to do, now I've got it laid out, is work on the background. And the reason you would begin with the background is because then you can paint your objects on top of um, what you're painting, on, of your background. If I was doing a landscape, I would paint my sky first, and then I would paint my trees, and then I would paint my middle ground, and then I would paint the stuff that's the closest. But it's just easier to start with things that are underneath or behind. Um, so I look at what my plate is setting on and it's just kind of a, a dull yellow tablecloth and I realize I forgot the shadow under the plate, so I'm going to put that in really quick. Because it's, it, I think it's really important to put your shadows in, they are part of the, part of the whole picture. And see the red was an accident, but we'll just work with it. Kind of dip my brush in there accidentally. I mean, you should be able to, the viewer should be able to clearly tell where the light source is. Now I'm going to add some blue to my shadow, darken it up. Okay, so I take a big brush. If you have a big area to cover, you want to use a big brush. And I'm going to mix up something that approximates the color of the table which is kind of a yellow because the light source is yellow. So that's really yellow. I'm still keeping my paint really thin. And keep your strokes really loose. A lot of my students, I see them do this. You know, and, and one of my students, you know, they actually spent a half hour doing this, filling in the background when I could have had the whole painting done. But a la prima, you just quickly work, work through it. And I'm not probably gonna try to get as detailed as the painting I showed you earlier because I won't have that much time. But we should be able to get through most of the painting. And sometimes when you're painting, you want to exaggerate the color of what you're painting. Um, because the table, the table is just kind of an ugly yellow color. So we want to make it pretty, so we might make the color brighter. So the next thing I would do is the next thing that is directly on top of the table, which is the plate. And it's pretty close in color. But it's brighter. Because they're both in the same, being hit by the same light source, they really, you know, they share a lot as far as color, but maybe not necessarily in value. Okay, so then the, the local color of the fruit. Obviously, the lemon is going to be yellow. Local color is the basic color that you see when you look at what you are painting. I mean, there are shadows on the lemon, and there are highlights on the lemon, but the basic color that I see is lemon yellow with a little bit of green. Now the lime, obviously, 
the local color is going to be green, kind of a yellowish green. And the orange is going to be orange. So there you have the basic layout. And I don't know, it maybe took us 10 minutes and we have it. Now we have everything, we, have a, we know what every, everything is, what color it is, where it's placed. Now we just have to define the edges and emphasize the shadows and put in the highlights. So the first thing we do is work on the shadows. And really the key here is to make your shadows dark enough and getting them in the right place. Most shadows are warm if you're inside, so I'm adding a little bit of red to my shadow here. I'm using an earth color, the initial earth color that I used, and a little bit of the red. If you guys have questions, you just ask too. We have a couple of viewers here running the cameras, but they haven't asked me any questions yet. Okay, so all I'm doing is emphasizing the shadows. I have two light sources in here, actually. I have the one that I have shining on the fruit, and then there are some overhead lights, so that makes it more difficult even than if I had just one light source. But we can work with it. So the orange is behind the other two pieces of fruit, so I think I will work on that one first. Okay, right now it looks more like a, a baseball. It needs to be really brightened up. So I'll try some really thick orange paint, maybe mix some yellow in there with it. Okay, it's, it's kind of looking like an orange, but it doesn't have any texture yet. Texture is what I call a detail and would be added toward the end. Since I have this brush though, I'm gonna fix that edge. Okay, I think I'll do the line next. The part that is darkest on anything is the part, any object that you're painting is the part that is furthest away from the light. And on this line, it's the bottom, but there's also some reflected light coming up and hitting the line from the plate. So actually the darkest part of this line is toward the center here. 